Welcome back fellow gamers, it's been months since I've uploaded a video game commentary because I have been really busy with real life stuff in the past 4 months. So today I'll be featuring one of the best FPS RPG games that I've played and that is Far Cry 4. This one's gonna be a lengthy video as I will try to cover as much as I can about the game. Now here's an advanced warning, since I'm going to be reviewing the entire game, there will definitely be spoilers. But just know that this game was released last year, so just think of this video as an opinionated, summarized version of the Far Cry 4 game. Okay, let's start first with the background, I mean what is Far Cry 4 all about? Well, you play the role of Ajay Gali, who is now coming back to his home country of Kirat in order to scatter his mother's ashes to Lakshmana. Fun fact, there is an ongoing civil war in Kirat between two factions, namely the Golden Path and the Royal Army. Apparently, you happen to be the son of the great Mohan Gali, who was the founder of the Golden Path. At the start, you're pretty neutral in all of this, you don't want to get involved, and you just want to fulfill your mom's dying wish. So, on your way, your bus is stopped by soldiers of the royal army, then suddenly a helicopter lands, and then this guy comes out, the leader of the royal army, Pagan Min. Given his temper and violent nature towards mistakes, one could wonder, why am I still alive? Being the son of Mohan, Pagan should have killed me on sight. Instead, this happens. Well, you'll find out why later on in this commentary. So in the next scene, you're now having lunch with Pagan, which is very awkward after what just happened. Your friend tries to send a message for help and gets caught. Pagan tells you to wait as they torture him to squeeze out information. Of course, who the hell would just sit there given the scenario? So, as you try to sneak your way around, surprise, the golden path infiltrates inside to bust you out. What a way to breach in! By the way, you also get to climb mountains in this game, and I'm fascinated with this feature because I recently climbed the highest mountain in our country. Okay, after some cutscenes, you're now free to explore the world of Kirat. So, first things first, gathering. Stacking up on herbs will allow you to craft syringes that will help you a lot as you progress throughout the game. Now, as you venture around, you'll realize Kirat is full of danger, so you always have to be on your guard because apparently people end up killing one another even if it wasn't intended. Or was it? That is what you get for selling me overpriced merchandise! Also, animals. Even the tiniest of little shits can be lethal predators. Holy shit, I almost died. Remember when I said to always be on your guard? I was just roaming around trying to take down propaganda posters, and when I looked to my left, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, rhinos, rhinos, rhinos! Start the boat, why aren't you starting? Start the boat! Come on, man! Whew, alright, I made it out. <laughs> you can't swim, dog! And now it floats. Also, you have to skin animals to make sturdier bags that will increase your carrying capacity. PETA is not going to be happy about this. So yeah, you spend the first few hours hunting and gathering just to make sure you're well prepared and armed to the teeth. Trust me, it pays off and it will make your missions a walk in the park. Now, there is one useful animal in the game that isn't hostile to you. The karate elephants aren't just for show, they can become quite valuable assets. In fact, you can actually storm bases with them and they will just ram everything on sight and destroy everything in its path. Even when the guy is clearly dead, you can still hear his soul screaming. Also, it's a pretty good mode of transportation if you want to venture around Kirat in style. Far Cry 4 is an open world game so there's always a choice in how you choose to travel. You can ride a boat in this game or while being chased by rabid wolves in the Himalayas, a snowmobile will help you escape. Which is pretty cool actually, however nothing beats a gyrocopter. You can get to almost anywhere with this and it's pretty much the fastest way to get to your destination without fast travel. In this case, I used it to quickly liberate a bell tower instead of having to climb up all the way to the top. 
Once you've sabotaged their radio, a piece of the map will be revealed. Also, gyrocopters aren't just meant for exploration, they will give you a huge advantage in fighting enemies, even catch up to hostiles on the move. Speaking of enemies, let's talk about combat. As I've said before, being prepared always pays off, and I've worked on getting the best weapons in my arsenal. So I just sort out the combinations depending on the mission. For example, this armor-piercing sniper rifle can take down helicopters at long range. At close range, a recurve bow with an explosive tip arrow can do the same job. There are also takedowns in this game, which is a nice alternative for CQC insta-kills. You're basically free to assess how you want to eliminate your targets. If you want to go stealthy, a Vector SMG has almost no recoil, so it's perfect for quick successive assassinations. In some missions, I want to go for a well-coordinated and strategic ambush. Of course, some mistakes are inevitable. I cooked that grenade too long, now I don't want to make the same error twice, so I threw another frag with just the right timing. I think I handled that pretty well. Now let's get into themes. As displayed at the start of this video, Far Cry 4 is intended for mature audiences as it features some adult content like being under the influence of drugs. You start to hallucinate and shit and you begin to lose track of what is real and what isn't when you're high. There are these two pretty shady looking characters, and you begin to speculate that something is definitely wrong with these guys. I mean, what the hell kind of a name is Yogi? We should get home! <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, the first time you meet these guys, they drug you, and that's how you end up in the arena where you must fight for your life. Which brings us to another mature theme, which is nudity. But this accounts to a very minuscule part of the story, merely a few cutscenes and one NPC if I remember correctly. Then there's the uh, war and violence which is present in most FPS games. Okay, now that we're done with the themes, the background and the basics, let's skip right to the ending. After you storm into Pagan's fortress and corner him unarmed, you're given a choice to shoot him or not. I was curious of the latter's outcome and this cutscene you're looking at right now is a result of that decision. You get to find out a shocking revelation. Ajay's mom had an affair with Pagan, she got pregnant and conceived a baby girl. So Lakshmana is not a place, no, Lakshmana Min is Ajay's half-sister who was killed by Mohan Gali when he found out about it. So after you place the urn, Pagan lifts off with the chopper and leaves Kirat. You could kill him, but I didn't because... Well, he never had any plans to kill me, so that was put into consideration. After the post-credits, Amida is now the undisputed leader of the Golden Path in my campaign. Unfortunately, she's now become a tyrant just like Pagan. She's now forcing people to join the Golden Path and they will be killed if they refuse to follow. All that effort to free the karate citizens of a military dictator and now this comes in? I couldn't allow this to continue on. Go to hell, Amida. Alright, so now that the Golden Path is after me and Kirat is left without a leader and all that, <laughs> anarchy for the win, I had to fly out to the mountains and our next story continues on in the Himalayas, into the Valley of the Yetis. Video link to part 2 is in the description below. Alright, thanks for watching.